A user reached out asking how to create that pyramid on the left. Of course, you need to measure some angles, which is tough in Tinkercad. I've got a strategy, so let's get cracking. So real quickly, if we zoom in, you'll notice that this was an imported SDL. There are issues with the design that would need to be cut off. Instead of messing with this design, I wanted to give you a scratch way to make a replica. The first thing we're going to do is find the base shape. If we move to the shapes panel, we can search. If you type trapezoid or trap, you will see several of them. And the one that we want is called the double trapezoid. It's pretty handy, so it is a wise choice to make it a favorite. When you bring it out, do not stretch the handles. Make sure you type in the measurements. I want to come close to this. Notice if we click on it, we can see that it's 53 by 53 at this spot. We do need to measure the top. I'm going to do that by setting a cube on top of it. And then if we select the two, do L for a line, make this one the boss, we can choose center. And we can look at it from this corner, and we can choose center. I'm going to set my measurement to point 0.1. Now we click simply on the red one and grab one of these handles and do Alt-Shift. We simply want to get out to that very edge. You can see it's 24.83 and I'm close. I'm gonna get a little closer and say, you know what? That gets us a number close to 25, which is gonna be great for our scratch project. For this recreation, I'm gonna just use 50 then for the bottom and 25 for the top. If we check the height quickly, it was 92. I'm gonna build mine at a height of 90. So once again, we click over here and we want that base to be 50. Press enter, 50 press enter, 25 press enter, 25 press enter, and like I said, 90 for the height. Bam! That is our base shape. Now we've got to cut in those awesome pieces. Notice if it ever moves like this and snaps out of the way, just retype the number and press enter. Sometimes you also have to change a number. I'm going to put 24. And now I'm going to switch it back to 25 and just wait patiently for it to snap into place. So next up, we need to measure this gap right here and the gap up top. All right, so let's do some quick measurements here. I'm going to bring out a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to shift shrink it so it's pretty skinny. And let's zoom in here and get a decent measurement of this corner. So I'm right to the edge of it. Notice it does slope. I'm going to switch to a 0.1 nudge so I can get close. And now let's stretch it across. And at the bottom, notice it was something close to 22.4. Because of how I changed my numbers, I'm just going to use 20 for that one. If I do Control D and do Control Shift Up, I can move that up to the very top. Let's move it back in. Once again, shift nudge makes that faster. And let's measure this as well. I'm going to zoom in. Now I can just grab that black handle and get it to the very edge. And the black handle and get it to the very edge. And we're going from 22 to 9. So for my cut in, I'm going to go from 20 to 8. We're going to grab this shape once again from the trapezoids. T-R-A-P, and this time we want this trapezoid, and we're going to cruise it to the ground level. I'll show you why in just a second. Let's first type our measurements, though. I'm going to start with a height of 95. I want it to be a little longer because it's going to cut through. This one was cut in 6.5 millimeters, so I'm going to make this 7.5. That way it'll be able to stick out from the side one whole millimeter, and then the base width was 20, and the top width was 8. Once again, click, type it, press enter, and wait for it to arrive. That is the shape where you're going to cut it out with the hole tool. Now if we grab this and do C for cruising, we want to cruise it right on this wall, and then rotate it 90 degrees this way. Notice if you do shift rotate, it only takes two clicks and you can hit D to drop. Bingo, it is in place. 
I'm now going to select them both and do L for align. And the alignment I care about, I'm going to pick the gray one as the master and I need it to be centered. And then I need to slide this up on an angle. So we're going to hit work plane and I'm going to just nudge it or shift nudge it until it gets to the top. I want to make sure that it's going to cut all the way through. See how that's above and all the way below. That's why I made it longer. I'll go past just a couple more and then we're going to sink it in. Remember how it had to be six and a half? So I'm going to start by going to a two millimeter nudge. Notice the work plane is right there. So when I do control down arrow, that's two millimeters in, four millimeters in, six millimeters in. And then I want to switch to a half. And I'm going to do control down arrow one more time to, to sink it in the exact amount. Bingo, that one's in place. I'm going to put the work plane back on the ground. All right, now we want that on the other side as well. Watch this. Control D, shift nudge to move it to the other side. Notice I went way past. And then we're going to mirror it. Simply click on this arrow and bingo, you've got your distance. Now if we do W for work plane and D for drop, it's at the base place. I'm going to put the work plane back on the ground for a minute, and I need to match the height. Shift select, L for align. This one's the boss, and bingo, they're at the same height. Notice it's connected to that work plane. So now we can do our steps again. This time I'm going to do it in reverse order. Work plane is on that face. Control down arrow to sink it in one click. Switch to the two millimeter nudge and there's two millimeters more four millimeters and six by doing control down arrow now as I look notice this isn't poking all the way out I'm gonna fix that with the align tool let's put the work tool back on the ground I'm gonna zoom out so I can click over here once again it is shift select L for align and we want that one to be the boss now they are matched exactly we're going to select those two at the moment. Shift, select, control G to group. So they are a pair. And this is where it gets really cool. When you do control D and rotate 90 degrees, notice I just stayed in the circle. That part of our shape is finished. Let's select those and do control G to group. You will notice that these sink in a lot further on this one. That is because over here, remember, this is hidden and you can't really see the full design from that top angle. Now friends, we need to add these grooves on the side. To do that, we need to know this exact angle. Let me show you the trick we're gonna use to measure angles. Bring out a cube, shift, shrink it, and type size 10 for your exact measurement. We're gonna take these two and line them up. L for a line. I want to go to the corner and to the corner, just like that. Now I'm going to move this in so there's nothing left over. I'm going to do Control D on this, make it a hole, Shift select the red cube, and group it. This will take a moment because it's sort of complex, but this gives us the shape we're going to use to measure the angle of our pyramid. If you bring this out, you can see that wedge is right there. If we click R for ruler, I'm going to put it right on this spot right here. Click on our shape, and I'm going to change the green movement to zero so it's right at it. Pan so we can see this better and make the green zero so it's right at that spot. And what this did was find this measurement of 1.39. We need that to do some fancy dancy math. Friends, to do that, we're going to use a calculator. I'm going to launch mine by typing calc. On the calculator, I'm going to switch to scientific mode. I want to do a trig function that's going to involve that height of 10 and the 1.39. So I'm going to type 1.39 divided by the original height of 10, but we want to use the tangent of it. When we hit equals, friends, there is our angle 7.88. Once again, super skill shared by ZDP189. Now that we know that number, 7.88, it is time to add the grooves. I am going to bring out a normal cube, 
disable the ruler with the X. I can now grab the cube and I'm going to shift stretch or shrink it, but I want to type the number four. That's the number I'm going to use for cutting this out. I do need to make it taller. I'm going to go taller than we did. 95 is a great number. And then we need to rotate it twice. Once this direction, remember it was 7.88. I am stretching this way out here, and then where it said negative 15, I'm typing negative 7.88 and pressing enter. Notice it did keep both decimal points, and then I also want to rotate it this way. Once again, rotate instead of negative 20, I'm going to type negative 7.88 and press enter. That gives us this corner stick. I'm going to select them, and I'm going to do L for a line. I'm going to make it come right to this corner and this corner. And you can see that runs right up there. Absolutely perfect. If we click on it and do two clicks down, because remember I did size four. So I just moved it two millimeters and two millimeters. It is ready to cut out that groove. We do need to note that it is too high. So with the work plane set just like this, I'm just going to do control down one, two, three so that it runs below it notice that is still cutting that nice corner and if we check up top it is cutting that nice corner as well i am going to do Control d with that shape shift nudge it to the other side and all i want to do is the mirror of it bingo and then we can just nudge it into place just like that those are done let's do shift select to grab the two of them Control D, shift nudge to move across. Are you ready for this? Mirror, bingo. Once again, nudge it back into place. That, my friends, completes our tower. Control G to group. How cool is that? Friends, there you have it. A pretty wicked pyramid with accurately measured angles. I want to say thanks again to ZDP189 for sharing the cool math that makes that happen. And also, I'm a for the question. Of course, friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. As I wrap up, friends, I do want to send a huge shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. If you are interested in supporting me, you can find the details in the description of this video. Of course, I do also want to highlight my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. If you look below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down just a little further, you'll find my course, Tinkercad in 20 days. It is hosted on cadclass.org. Of course, if you look over here, there's a video that explains it all. And down at the bottom, there's a sweet coupon code 25, HL Tinkercad. It'll get you 25% off any of the amazing courses offered on cadclass.org. You can simply hit visit now to get there almost instantly. I do also want to highlight the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. At the very top of the page, you can also find the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.